Five star copies all, go ahead. Message to observer, Alpha, three rounds, AT delay in effect, three guns. Bravo, two rounds, two guns, smoke on effect. Hey, what's up guys? This is Andrew with another video from the Options Millionaire Educational Series. In this video, I'm going to be going over my trading view setup. Not only the indicators, but how I build my watch list. Now, everything I build on here is with intentionality. Uh, everything I put on there has a purpose and a reason to point me towards the entry and exit of a trade. I want to be very precise with everything I do, and I want to have the highest probability setup on every single trade I take, and everything you see on my screen is going to do just that for me. Now I get asked all the, all the time for everyone that's been following along the past four months of how do I exactly set up my trading view? Uh, what do I have in my watch list? Why do I choose what I have in my watch list? Why do I choose the indicators I do? So yeah, it's just another reason of why I wanted to really throw this out there so everyone can see it. And you can, you know, choose what you like, um, discard what you don't to really build your own personalized system and really get good with the nuances of trading view. Because trading view, in my opinion, is the best charting platform out there. It's, it's very cosmetically pleasing. It's technically sound and it's very easy to use once you learn all the nuances. So let's dig in. So I'll go ahead and start out with the indicators I use, which are, are indicated here on the top left. The first one here is just the regular volume indicator, which uh, pretty much comes standard on all of the trading view setups. So once you open your trading view, that should automatically be there. But if you can kind of see it, just if you, as long as you just hover over each candle here, uh, it shows you the volume on that particular candle up here. So like you can see here, 299,000 shares bought there, uh, 153 sold, 57,000, 76,000, so on and so forth. So as long as you scan over each cursor, as if I go right, that'll update. Next, I use the EMAs. So the eight, 21, and 34 EMAs. And I've got the eight as blue, the 21 as yellow, and the 34 as purple. And you see those right here. In order to add those, go up to the indicators here, uh, type, type in EMA, and I go moving average exponential, click on it. And I've added one here just to show you how to update it. Now, all I do is click on the cog and I'll update, I'll update this to the eight or the 21 or the 34. You'll have to add this three different times to add that. And then I change the color. So I would go over to style and then click on purple. And that's how I would add that particular 34. So that's how I added those three. Just got to add it three different times. So next I'm going to go over pivots. Pivots, one of the things that I use highly in my supports and resistance uh, profiling when I do my pre-market analysis. And uh, actually, since I'm making this video, I saw that there was an update. So I added the new updated pivots HL, which you see it has these nice bright uh, prices, which are awesome. So yeah, if you are haven't been using the pivots HL, go in there and see the trade if you did do an update at the time of this video. So I added it. Now I, all I do is click on the indicators and I click on pivots HL right there and it should be pivots high, low updated. Clicked on that. Yeah, it's got this nice bright numbers there. So good stuff. I mean, pivots just show you the price on which uh, the price on which they pivot or reject. So you can start really building in price levels in tiding with the volume profile. And having said that, let's go with the volume profile next. Uh, VP right here. Uh, that's what I add. And on pre-market, it's a little wonky. I can't, I mean, when the market's closed, it's a little wonky. It, it sometimes doesn't show up because there's no price action. So I'll go out to the one year, which usually does. So this is the volume profile, which I use. It's my favorite uh, indicator out there. I think it's the most important because it shows volume at price. Now I do have a video in my educational series going over this. So I won't go too far in depth on this, on this indicator, because that is not the intent of this video, but this is the volume profile and it shows volume at price as opposed to volume at time, which is down here. Very good indicator. Highly suggest you take a look at it and check out that video. Next, you've got the VWAP right here. Now VWAP is just a common line uh, that everyone uses. I think it's a very important line to use in terming because it's a volume weighted average price. It shows volume at price or volume at an average weighted price. So you've got that green line there. As you can kind of see as in the beginning of the day when there's not much volume, it goes up. But then as the volume shakes out to the side, it averages in and you got this kind of nice peanut butter spread line that goes up and it's a good line to trade off of. So now we've got the session ranges, which is a fantastic uh, proprietary indicator brought on by uh, Veteran Exotics in the Discord. And you can see it's indicated by this yellow and blue dots that you can see on top and the bottom. What this does is open up at market open and it sets the final prices at 10.05 Eastern. And that sets the high and the low, including the wicks, high and the low price in that time range time frame and that's stays there so you can trade off of that sometimes most of the time it works like a charm and it, it identifies whether you're going to have a trend up day like you did here a trend down day which you did here or a range day which 
you had here for a while until it broke out of the top. It's a great indicator to use uh, to show when the price is going to be range bound or trend. And then the afternoon range starts at 1.30 Eastern and ends at 2.05 Eastern. And that once that range starts, you completely disregard the morning range. Now, how do I add the OM session ranges here? I go to indicators, I type in OM session ranges right there and you click on that and that's uh the, this is the author right there you click on that and you don't have to change anything it automatically adjusts now you can you can change the colors if you want i use these colors here morning as yellow afternoon as blue and last and certainly not least i use the 50 simple moving average not the exponential but simple 50 simple and that's something that a lot of people always get wrong or they uh, get confused with when we're talking about it uh, live so it's simple moving average and you add that i'll i'll since i maxed out on my indicators i'll X this out and I'll add it for you manually. You go to moving average, it's like a type right. You click on moving average here. Then you go to the cog and I set my 50 as red. Personally, that's just what I like to do. Inputs and then you change the length for the observations to 50. What the 50 does now, well, some people do use 50 for day trading, which if you find a correlation with it, go for it. But I use it on the one year chart. I personally use it on the one year chart and it shows me when the monthly cyclicals of SPY actually happen, you see this bounding off every about, about 30 days, you see a bound off the 50. And that's usually what I use it for to show me when exactly time for me to do that. But that is how I add it. All right, so next, let's get into the watch list. I have my watch list divided into three different sections. The top is going to be my high level generic stuff. The middle I've divided out FANG so I can monitor each component of the FANG since they are such a big component of the SPY. And then down here is my bread and butter. This is what I use most of the time during the day. So this is high priority, medium priority, and low priority in terms of doing my actual day trades. So starting out at the top, we've got SPX, which obviously we all know it's the big brother of, uh, that's an old Fibonacci, it's a big brother of SPY. TNX, which is the 10 year treasury notes. NDX, which is the NASDAQ 100 index. DJI, which is Dow Jones Industrial. And DXY, which is a dollar US currency index. Next up, we got FANG, which we all know what those are. Netflix, Google, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, and Tesla. Yes, I know Microsoft is not in FANG, but I like to include them anyway. Coming down to the third, we've got SPY, which I think we all know what that is. The SPY uh, S&P 500 ETF Trust, which is my bread and butter and flagship ETF that I like to trade. QQQ, I like to monitor because uh, that shows a lot of weight in the market. And obviously we do play some trades on the Qs every now and then. VIX, which is a very, very large component of my trading system. I think it's one of the second or third most important things in my uh, item watch list here. And we all know like the, the, the VIX and SPY in a bull market. And I will say with a bull market, a lot of people ask this question all the time. In a bull market, S&P, the SPY and the VIX normally inverse each other. VIX goes down, S&P goes up. VIX goes up, S&P goes down. Now, in a bear market, when we are trending down for months, it doesn't act the same. It does not act the same as that. So I will caution you, if we do turn into a bear market, do not do not continue to hang your head on the fact that S&P and VIX will inverse each other because it does not do that in a bear market. So be aware of that. After that, we've got my X sectors, XLK, XLF, XLY, XLB, XLE, XLV. Now, there are 11 different X sectors, and these are them. So be aware that I choose these because of the weighting and because I like to monitor these particular sectors. The, I think these sectors that I pick now are very crucial in this particular market. And you have to identify which sectors are going to be moving in which particular markets. This sector, the healthcare, the real estate, the materials, all that stuff is going to be moving in this particular market because of the coronavirus situation. So that's why I've picked the sectors that I have to monitor. And these are the ones I monitor. After that, we've got TLT, which is the 20 year bonds. You know, you all know how important this is to me. So I, I watch this very carefully and I'm watching to see if there's going to be a rotation out of bonds into the market or out of market into the bonds. And that's how risk, and that's how you identify risk on and risk off situations where the big money is putting their money. Because you know, me, you retail investors, all the other people that are retail traders, when we decide to go risk off, we just go to cash. We liquidate our assets and we go to cash. Well, hedge funds cannot do that. So what do they do? They buy bonds and that's their risk off method. So if you saw, if you see a lot of money going into bonds, you know, there's a risk off situation and you could see, all right, maybe if the hedge funds guys are going risk off, they're anticipating some sort of down move and maybe I should do the same. So you always have to monitor bonds to see where risk off situations are coming below that. I've got 
the uh, E-Mini Futures, the NASDAQ E-Mini Futures, and I've got the S&P E-Mini Futures, which I pay live data for these, which is $4 for this one for ES and $2 for the NQ, which is $6 per month total. And that gets me live data and you can trade those 24 seven. So uh, it's good stuff, good stuff. So now that I've gone over the watch list, I wanna show you a couple of neat tips and tricks that I use to trade with TradingView very quickly and effectively, because I don't wanna be fumbling through menus and scroll down menus when I'm trying to look through data very quickly, because I'm trying to manipulate data I'm trying to monitor data, monitor data very quickly when there's a trade happening. Uh, one of the ways I use it, one of the first things I use is going to be the time frame changes. And instead of coming up here and going to the three minute, uh, five minute, 15 minute, which could be very cumbersome, I use the numerical keys. So if I want to go to the three minute chart, I'll just click the number three key and hit enter. Hit five key for the five minute, hit enter. If I want to go to the two minute, here's a two minute, hit enter. One five for the 15 minute, so on and so forth. So very quick, I can make these changes very quick if I want to just change these time frames. Very good if you're a multiple time frame trader like myself. Second one is if you want to scale time frames and prices very quickly, you do so with your mouse. So uh, for me on my mouse, if I want to scale, if I want to scale the time, I actually use a scroll wheel and I can scroll in and out of my time to really capture shorter data. I can continue to zoom in on the time here with my scroll data. Now, if you want to scale your price, you come over here with a left click and you click on the actual price here and you could scale in and out and just draw up and down. I didn't continue to do that and scale in and out. So if you really want to focus in on a candle, say if I want to focus in on a three minute candle very tightly, I can go to the three minute chart here. I could zoom in here with my scroll wheel and then my left click, I get left click here and really scroll into some candles to see some really close movement if you wanted to do so. Now, when you're done with all that, just go back to normal. Just come down here to the bottom right and click auto and that'll auto scale you back appropriately so it's not all wonky. And then finally, if you want to scroll up and down with your watch list, instead of coming over here and clicking, if you want, if you want to be hands off, just come down here to your uh, up and down arrow keys and just click up and down. So if I want to go down to VIX, there you go, click down to VIX. Go down to XLY, I'll come down to XLY, so on and so forth. Up, down for, down and up for up watch list. You can go all the way up and down your watch list with that. It's just using your basic up and down keys. So that's all I got for you guys. This is a nice easy video on how I set up my charts and my watch list. I've included links below in the description uh, to link if you want to add both my charts and my watch list, if you want to mirror those and follow along. If you are new to the channel, like and subscribe to this video. It helps you get a notification for all future content and educational videos and live streams, as well as helps this community grow so I can reach others and teach them how to do this properly. If you are new, come over and join the Discord. A lot of great resources, a lot of great channels to learn from, not only for trading, but if you want to talk about real estate, long-term investing, etc., etc., there's a lot of great resources there for you to do so. You can also come over and join the Patreon community. Uh, Patreon is above and beyond what I offer for free in the Discord. We talk about everything you have the podcast that I access to. I talk about everything financial related, uh, as well as the Patreon exclusive chats in the Discord, which I hang out in and we talk about everything throughout the day and whatever generalized questions or customized questions that you have for me. Anyway, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Until next time, see you.